My name is Erin Sullivan DiMartino, and I am a clinical medical ethicist and assistant professor of pulmonary and critical care medicine at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. On behalf of my co-authors, I am pleased to present findings of a paper published in this month's Mayo Clinic Proceedings, Decisions to Withdraw Extracorporeal Membrane Oxygenation Support, Patient Characteristics and Ethical Considerations. This paper is the result of a collaboration between intensivists and ethicists. In the paper, we examine the experiences of patients withdrawn from extracorporeal membrane oxygenation support, or ECMO. ECMO is a form of cardiac and or pulmonary support for patients with organ failure refractory to conventional intensive care therapies. It can be thought of as similar to cardiopulmonary bypass machine used in cardiac surgery, but on a longer term basis for critically ill ICU patients suffering from a wide array of cardiopulmonary pathologies. ECMO can be initiated as a bridge to heart or lung transplant, as a bridge to mechanical circulatory support device such as a ventricular assist device or total artificial heart, or it can be initiated when there is no liberation strategy identified from the outset and prognosis is uncertain, but there is hope of recovery. We examine the cases of 235 adult patients treated with ECMO at Mayo Clinic in Rochester between 2010 and 2014, and we found that 50% died in the hospital. Of these decedents, just over half, or 62 patients, died after a request to withdraw ECMO. Median duration of ECMO support was six days. 81% of patients were receiving heart-lung support, or veno-arterial, VA, ECMO. All decedents were supported by at least one other life-sustaining therapy, such as mechanical ventilation or dialysis. Approximately three quarters died of multiple organ system dysfunction. Only a minority of this cohort had been supported with ECMO as a bridge to mechanical circulatory support or bridge to transplant. The remaining 82% were categorized as bridge to decision. Requests to withdraw ECMO came from surrogate decision makers. Not a single patient had decisional capacity at the time. Palliative care and ethics were consulted infrequently, whereas Chaplaincy was involved in nearly all of the cases. Almost one-third of these patients on continuous resuscitative therapy had a do not resuscitate order in place during the final hours of their lives. As with the introduction of other forms of life-sustaining therapies to the practice of critical care, ECMO presents new ethical questions and causes us to revisit others. Our data suggests that our clinicians generally support the concept of a time-limited trial of ECMO, or a life-sustaining therapy, under circumstances of clinical uncertainty when there is hope for recovery that can later be withdrawn. It is important to state that this practice is coupled with a willingness to heed the requests of surrogates or conceivably the patients themselves to withdraw therapies that are no longer considered beneficial when a poor prognosis has become evident. The physicality of clamping an ECMO circuit may evoke a strong sense of moral agency on the part of the clinician, but we can identify no ethically distinguishing feature of ECMO that would set it apart from other therapies withdrawn in the ICU, such as mechanical ventilation. So long as the intent of withdrawing ECMO is to separate the patient from a technology that is perceived as burdensome or non-beneficial and is in fact impeding the natural dying process, we argue that there is no relation between ECMO withdrawal and physician-assisted suicide or euthanasia. Finally, our data suggests that the role of do not resuscitate orders in patients 
receiving a continuous cardiopulmonary resuscitative therapy warrants further exploration. We hope that you find useful information in this article about the clinical experiences and ethical considerations of withdrawing ECMO. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.